What really happened to Caligula? Was Caligula an insane, murderous, and depraved Roman Empire? Or was he inefficient in handling the ultimate power he received at such a young age? Caligula ruled Rome as an emperor just for four years, but has been immortalized as history's most cruel and erratic Roman emperor. From throwing obscene orgies, having sex with his sisters, and being an ingenious and sadistic torturer, there were many bizarre things he did that led to his assassination by his courtiers. Let's dig deep into the pages of history to know what really happened to Caligula. Caligula was not his real name. Caligula came from a renowned family that blended celebrity splendor, royalty, and a cult of personality. He was the youngest son of Germanicus, the rising star of the Roman Empire, the third child of eminent Roman commander Germanicus, and his wife, Agrippina the Elder. Gaius Julius Caesar Germanicus was born in 12 AD. His family spent his early life at his father's position on the Rhine. He began traveling with his father on military operations when he was three years old and his small soldier attire included little boots. His father's troops found this amusing and mockingly gave him the name Caligula, which is Latin for little boot. As the youngest member of the Roman pantheon, he was the chick, the sweetheart, and the mascot. Germanicus enjoyed displaying his son as a miniature Roman legionary. From Caligula to Emperor Caligula, the Emperor Tiberius and his Praetorian Guardsman Sejanus, who viewed the popular general's older sons as political competitors, lost favor with Caligula's family after Germanicus's death in 17 AD. Due to treason charges, Caligula's mother and brothers were put into exile and died. Up until the death of Sejanus 31 AD, Caligula's grandmother Antonia was able to protect him from these machinations. Caligula moved home with the ailing Tiberius the next year and was raised as a viper in Rome's bosom. Caligula and his cousin Gemellus were appointed equal heirs to the empire by Tiberius. Caligula's Praetorian ally Marco set up Caligula's proclamation as the only emperor when the emperor passed away in 37 AD. Early Years of Caligula's Reign Caligula initiated several political changes at the outset of his rule, including the recall of all exiles living outside of Rome. His early signs started showing up in the early years. Caligula was not naturally attractive, being thin, pallid, and covered with a lot of thin hair. He particularly didn't want any reminders of his goat-like appearance, so he prohibited anybody in his vicinity from mentioning goats. What? It seems possible that he had an inferiority problem. He practiced horrifying facial expressions in a mirror, trying to underline his inherent ugly but he supposedly rolled around in cash and drank priceless pearls that had been dissolved in vinegar while living the high life. He kept playing childhood dress-up games, dressing strangely, wearing women's shoes, and accessorizing lavishly to seem to be a god, more than a human or an emperor. However, something changed during the following several months, which some have attributed to a terrible sickness, making Caligula more irrational and insane. Caligula's Illness Every night before going to bed, Caligula worried if he would be abruptly awakened and carried to the prison for execution. He believed that Tiberius, who was dying, would unexpectedly choose another heir, which would imply Caligula's demise, because no other emperor would acknowledge his claim to the empire. After Tiberius' death, Caligula transformed from a near hostage to the accepted ruler of Rome in a matter of hours. He was greeted with ferocious excitement upon his return to the city. Caligula soon experienced a nervous breakdown as a result of the post-traumatic stress of losing his family in early childhood. After collapsing, Caligula spent days in bed as the Romans hoped for his recovery. According to historians, he awoke from his sickbed as a maniac. Insanity of Caligula In Rome, Caligula's accession to power in 37 AD was warmly received. All exiles were called back and political changes were proclaimed. But a severe sickness in October of that year drove Caligula into a tailspin. 
and he spent the rest of his reign examining the darkest facets of himself. To mark his splendor, Caligula poured money on aqueducts, docks, theaters, and temples. He effectively managed the completion of significant Roman buildings, even though his extravagant architectural goals put Rome in debt. Caligula's arrangement for hundreds of merchant ships to build a three-mile-long floating bridge over the Bay of Baiae was the height of lunacy. He wore a glittering golden cape and rode back and forth across the bridge on his horse for two days. With his expenditures spiraling out of control, Caligula unexpectedly increased taxes on the populace of Rome to generate more revenue. Not only that, but a year after ascending to the throne, Caligula assassinated both Marco and Gemellus, his cousin and fellow heir. Caligula undertook military expeditions across the Rhine and the English Channel in 39 and 40 AD to carry on his daring father Germanicus's illustrious heritage. But after every battle was lost, he was on the verge of going insane. He ordered his men to whip the waves and plunder the sea for shells as the war's treasures because he was desperate to bring home triumph. He imagined that he was fighting against the mythical sea deity Neptune. The Inception of Caligula's Downfall However, the truth turned out to be worse. Rome's Emperor Caligula had been sidelined for many days. As usual, the Senate convened and made decisions and the Praetorian prefects oversaw the administration of justice in the provinces. The empire had conducted its business in silence. Rome didn't truly require a hands-on ruler because of the way the imperial system worked. According to Caligula, unnecessary meant disposable. Caligula started making changes to what he saw to be the situation. He would render himself indispensable and impose his reign on the Roman Senate and populace. It turned out to be a fatally misguided tactic. Caligula was not only ahead of his time by overtly assuming direct leadership of the empire, but was also declaring war on the Senate. As a result, the tale of Caligula's reign is one of a political fight for power rather than the antics of a young lunatic. Caligula was the final emperor of Rome to publicly exalt himself above the Senate. Caligula nevertheless proclaimed himself a god, evaluating himself above the Senate. The Emperor Domitian called himself Master and God, which was less strange in retrospect, but at the time it appeared blasphemous and strange. When it came to Caligula, the Senate seized on his assertion of divinity and labeled it as insane. They misrepresented every move made by an emperor who was already inexperienced, impulsive, and youthful. The hangover of power climbed his head so much so that he believed that he had the right to do anything to anybody. He made senior senators run for kilometers in front of his chariot, torturing them. He was accused of having sleazy connections with the spouses of his supporters and incestuous ties with his sisters. Caligula's Death Plot As Caligula's oppressive rule spiraled out of hand, a covert plan to assassinate him was conceived. The Roman treasury was being drained by Caligula's wastefulness more quickly than he could refill it through taxes and extortion. A plot hatched by the Praetorian Guard, the Senate, and the Equestrian Order to kill Caligula by Praetorian Guard members in late January of 41 AD. After a sporting event, he was accosted by a group of Praetorian guards who then savagely stabbed him more than 30 times. At his imperial palace, his wife and one-year-old daughter were also killed. After his murder, many of his monuments were demolished and his bones were lost. To add insult to Caligula's image, Claudius was named the new emperor of the Roman Empire. Claudius was the man he had ridiculed for years. He had been cowering behind a curtain, fearing for his own life and the only surviving adult male of royal blood. This is what really happened to Caligula. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, give it a like and go ahead and subscribe for more content just like this. Don't forget to hit the bell icon so you don't miss out on any new videos.